It's a sad fact that too many sports cars are kept like show ponies these days, locked up in a warm garage and only bought out for the occasional Sunday drive. Here in LA, it's even more depressing. Here, a sports car is often little more than a fashion accessory, something to be seen in, something to impress the others in the valet line outside a hip restaurant. Driving? Forget it. In LA, sports cars do some of their best work standing still. So when Lotus offered us a new Evora to test, we could have had it trucked to LA. Instead, we said we'd pick it up in Seattle. Why? Because we wanted to take this sports car on an epic drive. Our road trip would take us from Seattle to Missoula, Montana, where we'd turn south and zigzag our way across the rooftop of America, loosely following the Continental Divide Trail for 1,500 miles along the mighty mountain chain that runs from Alaska to the Panama Canal. Our route would take us through Yellowstone National Park and Jackson, Wyoming, then down to Steamboat Springs and Silverton in Colorado, and onto Santa Fe, New Mexico before we turned west for LA. Piloting the Lotus is Motor Trend executive editor Ron Kino. Trying to keep up with him in the Nissan Quest minivan that's just joined the Motor Trend long-term fleet is photographer Brian Vance and video producer Jim Gleason. The Evora might be a 2 plus 2, Lotus's first in 20 years, but it's still a tight fit inside. Ron's roller bag has to ride on the front seat. The coffee and pastries near the Clark Fork River are delicious, and we snap some photos to mark the start of our 1500 mile run through the mountains. But there's no time to waste. We have a divide to conquer. Route 93 takes us down towards Bitterroot Forest and across Lost Trail and Chief Joseph Passes. We stop at Big Hole National Battlefield, where Chief Joseph led his Nez Perce in a two-day fight against the US Army. The Nez Perce won the battle, but at a terrible cost. They suffered so many casualties they were forced to surrender two months later. It's hard to imagine the blood and pain of this place 134 years ago as we take in the grand sweep of the Pioneer Mountains. When it comes to national parks, Yellowstone is arguably the most iconic of them all. Established by the US Congress and President Ulysses S. Grant on March 1, 1872, it was the first national park in the world. It spans 3,500 miles over three states and is known for its extensive geothermal activity and vast array of wildlife. Yellowstone got its name from the golden-hued rocks lining this canyon, where the Yellowstone River plunges 308 feet to the canyon floor. Rolling down Highway 89, we pass the Grand Teton National Park, with a magnificent Teton range providing a spectacular view through the Avora's passenger window. So how does the Avora stack up as a road trip car? Well, if you're prepared to pack light, it stacks up rather well. Although compact, the Avora's cabin is comfortable thanks to the supportive Recaro seats. Even after a couple of hours at the wheel, you get out of the car feeling refreshed. But it's the chassis and suspension that make this Lotus such a delight to drive on these mountain roads. The steering is deliciously full of precision and feel, while the suspension, though firm, also manages to be surprisingly supple, soaking up bumps without unsettling the car. Even in conditions like these, the Avora is surprisingly capable. Getting snow tyres fitted before we picked the car up was a smart move. We 
make our way south through Wyoming's cowboy country. Fast grasslands, pickup trucks and 10 gallon hats. Sometimes called Ski Town USA for its world-class ski resort, Steamboat Springs was originally named by 19th century frontiersmen, who imagined the steam they saw rising from nearby hot springs was coming from an approaching steamboat. Steamboat Springs is at an altitude of 6,700 feet, and we begin a lengthy climb up I-40, coming face to face with the divide at the 9,426 foot Rabbit Ears Pass. With 258 pound-feet of torque from its 3.5-litre Toyota V6, the Avora shows no signs of wheeziness tackling the high-altitude grades. We get a little winded just looking at the elevation signs. A big surprise at the top of the 11,312-foot Monarch Pass. One British sports car is an uncommon sight in the Rockies, but two? And as rare as our laser blue Lotus Evora might be, we've been upstaged by this 1952 MGTD in British racing green, of course. As we come off Monarch Pass, the weather takes a turn for the worst. And we drive right into the heart of a massive snowstorm. But with the help of the snow tires, the little Lotus does amazingly well in the treacherous conditions. Traction is rarely an issue, and even when the car does step out of line, it only takes a flick of the wrist to get it back under control. We emerge from the storm into a winter wonderland. We can't sit around too long, though. We have a lot of miles to cover before we reach tonight's destination, the tiny mining town of Silverton. The Villa Delavale is a Silverton landmark that has been owned by the same family since it was built in 1901. It opened as a boarding house and from 1938 to 1987 served as a grocery store. Today it's a quaint seven room bed and breakfast that recalls the colourful history of this southwestern Colorado mining town. Snow, and plenty of it, greets us next morning. We borrow two of the Dallavale's old brooms to help get the loaders ready for the run to Durango. And with all this white stuff on the road, that might be tricky. Pushing the Aurora along these twisty, snow-dusted roads show why Lotus has a reputation for building some of the world's best handling cars. The Aurora stays flat and balanced through the turns, gripping the road. As for the steering, it might just be the best in the business. Quick, beautifully weighted, with firm on centre feel that stays consistent as you swing right or left. The 276 horsepower engine is gutsy enough to make this 3,047 pound Brit feel quick. It'll hit 60 in 4.7 seconds. But the six-speed manual transmission is a disappointment with a balky long throw that slows things down when you're trying to make the most of the engine. It's just not up to the rest of the car. The truth is the Avora is a brilliant chassis in search of a brilliant powertrain. Eight hours after leaving snowbound Silverton, we're in the warmth and sunshine of New Mexico. We make a brief stop at Echo Amphitheater, a natural sandstone arena whose shape creates an amazing echo chamber. From here, it's basically a schlep back along the I-40 to LA. By the time we arrive home, we'll have been on the road a week and logged more than 2,800 miles through eight states. We've crossed 16 passes, the highest reaching over 11,300 feet, and seen temperatures ranging from 22 to 83 degrees. And the Lotus Evora? It's proven surprisingly comfortable and capable in conditions that were tougher than expected. It's proven economical too, using 113 gallons of fuel for the trip an average consumption of 25.3 miles per gallon. 
The Lotus has covered more miles in a week than many LA show ponies will cover in six months. And that's a good thing. Sports cars are meant to be driven on epic drives. <laughs>